Does serving him not seem so nice anymore? Don't you worry! Sir, down there. Do you see? He's down there, that filth!
one shoot, or this place is going bye-bye. And Katya, you don't have to worry about her anymore. Understood, this evening, Katya. You must pray to the Lord for forgiveness, but for murdering my children, the children of God, you will burn in hell in the end of days. We left Volga behind. The endless expanses of Russia stretched before us now. Regretfully, Duke was not destined to see them. Was his death a fault of mine? Was everything that happened on the bridge? It could be. It's a cruel world that we live in, and it's not our responsibility to fix it. We only wanted to pass through, and it was not my fault they screamed for blood. Their zealousness reminded me of the Metro, where people are indoctrinated into a lie. That the world is dead and there's nowhere to go. Anyone who questions it gets fed a different lie, that the war is still going on. Here it's, electricity is a sin. Same difference, really. Artyom, wake up, dear. Is he up yet? Artyom, the colonel wants you on the breach. See you later. Come on, wake up. I'm so sorry about Duke. He was just a boy, really. He kept asking me for advice on how to become more attractive to a girl he knew. What to say to her. He couldn't wait to come back to her, proudly wearing scars and medals. Stay here for a bit, Artyom. Alyosha keeps telling everyone Duke could have jumped off the bridge in time. The others are also holding well, but I... I just unraveled. Of course, I had friends die before. He wasn't looking for death, Duke. He did volunteer for the most dangerous missions, but didn't expect to die. He was looking up to Stepan. Dad. You. Especially you. And he didn't die for nothing, did he? He wanted us to get there, to Yamantau. He wanted us to tell them about Moscow. How we survived there and still haven't given up. How we've been hiding for so long. But when I think of it being you, and not even knowing for sure, I'd never be able to live through it. So, you think I should just let it all out? I don't think that would make me feel better. I've been thinking, back home, we buried our friends at home. And avenged them at home. That home and life there sucked. 
We were kept there with chains. No, even worse, with lies. And now we are looking for a new home. But here, it's someone else's home, and we are not invited. Right. I've got to get myself under control. Go. Dad wanted to see you. This is great. I wish I could stay like this forever. Artyom, when you climbed those ruins back in Moscow, or with your radio, did you imagine our life on the surface at all? A home for one, a place where we could live, a log cabin on the outskirts of a forest, or how about a bungalow on an ocean shore? Oh, well, you know, there's something great in simply going anywhere like this, together. Through the abandoned stations, the ruins, the wasteland. Especially in our own private compartment. Thinking back, isn't this our honeymoon trip? <laughs> it certainly feels like one, even though it's a bit late. We've only had some honeymoon sorties at best so far. Leaving already? Well, go get them, tiger. <sighs> it's like living in a fairy tale. A prince has rescued his princess from a monster-infested dungeon, and is taking her to his magic kingdom where they are going to live happily ever after. Do you think we're going to find that kingdom in the end? Though, if it's with you, I'll be fine anywhere. <coughs> Live happily ever after is the most important part as far as I'm concerned. Time to go. Okay, let me get up. Part. 
Well, give my regards to Menshikov. <laughs> Over and out. You devil. <laughs> Over and out. <laughs> There was not a single transmission about any occupying force. There's so much regular chatter. So many stories. Dad says all those are coded transmissions, that they all have hidden meaning, but... Why would they be so secretive? Why aren't they using this railroad? Why don't they at least control its key junctions? Why did they not install any roadblocks? If they are even out here, this is the main transport artery, after all. Maybe they are not here at all. Maybe they never came here, or they are already gone. Though, where to? Remember, neither Katya nor Crest have ever met them. Though, we seem to be doing just fine even without them. It's like the Middle Ages. That Salantius is treating people like slaves, getting them killed. I can't believe they had it worse without his lies, nonsense, and human sacrifices. And us? We had been living down there for so many years, fighting each other. And nobody even thought you could live outside. Uncle Dokarev has already said 
the shop up. Wanna go look? It's so cool. Here, Uncle Artyom. Ah, hi, Artyom. See my new place? Fit for a king, I must say. Ah, what do you think of this workbench, eh? Everything is within reach, yet there's so much space left. Most of the stuff you and the guys found outside and gave to me went into making this workshop happen. So thank you. We'll have to keep pitching in like this too. Looks like we're facing a long journey, and useful things like ammo or equipment don't grow on trees. Plus, the further from Moscow we get, the harder they'll probably be to get. So don't forget to collect all the materials you find to keep us going. There's so many things to do. I haven't decided where I'm going to work on the suits, but I'll have to, and soon. And it's high time we fixed our uniforms. Some of our people are starting to look pretty ragged, you know. Duke's plate carrier didn't hold the back plate anymore. And he, well, he just kept joking about it. <clears throat> what was I? Well, I'll be working here from now on. Well, that's it. I bragged enough and won't waste any more of your time. The Colonel summoned you. Well, I have stuff to do too. You guys are fast to break gear, but none too expedient to fix it. Uncle Tokarev! Uncle Tokarev! <sighs> what would you like to ask, Nastya? Uncle Tokarev, do you have a sewing machine? No, I don't. But how are you going to fix the suits then? Well, like everyone else, I take a thread and a needle and I use a sail stitch. Whoa, cool! Can you teach me? I sure can, but later. I've got work to do. Will you let me fix Sam's rifle strap? Smoke break. That's good. Oh, this is one mean smoke. Damn, this is rough. Well, <clears throat> nothing we couldn't take. <clears throat> well, you are the right kind of guys. You, the colonel. Duke, that guy did a swell job on that bridge. He was a great guy. May he rest in peace, yeah. So, uh, yeah, what did I want to say? Uh, yes. Uh, thank you. you. You people accepted me, and, and I... Uh, I'm a simple guy. I, I, I will pay that debt back, okay? So... How do you like it out here after the tunnels? Freedom, huh? Sure thing. So much space. It feels too empty to me, though. Just reeds and ruins and those damn mutants. Hate them. Phew. Though you guys are gonna see the government. So, Bratuha, don't be mad, but just tell me. What the hell do you even need them for? Well, of course, it might be interesting to take a look, but throughout all of my rambling, I only met two kinds of ex-government people. Dead ones and gang leaders. And let me tell you, the latter are much worse than your typical bandit. They just have to make a speech before doing something awful. So what I mean, I, I didn't really care about the government even before the war, much less now, when everything's long since gone to shit. So what for, really? 
I'm a simple man. Artyomich, I told I'm with you. That means I'm with you for the long haul. But I'd much rather find a nice place to live at than go see the governor. Of course, they could give us luxury bunkers or something. Well, Artyom, you seem cold. Go get warmed up a bit. I'll smoke some more. I have stuff to think about. Or just stay. <laughs> we have enough space now. putting on a live performance here. So, Artyom, are you up for a jam? Come on, pick the guitar up. Well, the maestro is about to impress you. I'm sorry to ask, Katya, but Nastya's father, he's dead, isn't he? Does Nastya know? He is. I tried keeping it a secret. Told her he left for the market. Around three days passed, and I still kept it in. I just sat there with a needle in my hand and didn't see anything. It was all black before my eyes. And then she snuggles up to me and says, You should cry, Ma. You will feel better. Sini used to say it. So I cried and cried. She knows. She knows it all. I'm sorry, Katya. I'm so sorry. Let me tell you how we ended up at the bridge. We used to live in northeast from here. Well, guys, Quite close if you go the straight line. Memory. But it took us a month. Everything's bound to roll out there. This Yermak asked me and I told him. About. Do you he used to say there were lots of military factories out there. Say Not just the the there, of course. General industry. Oh, yeah. And now you can't pass through there even with filters. The radiation is so high. No railway either, just crater upon crater. We were quite far, but our counter still went crazy. One route appeared intact. There was nothing to bomb. So we used that one, thinking we'd get further to the west, but... 
But of course they did not let us cross the bridge with the diesel. They said it was satanic. They were ready to let us stay if we gave them the diesel to cleanse it. So we stayed. And then we could leave, even if we wanted. That old goat, Father Silentius, brainwashed everyone, so they would just pray and bow nonstop. They broke our diesel down with their bare hands and threw it into the river. Purification. And on top of it, they gave us trouble for not helping them. Senia went to check what was going on, and there were only locals there. Because Silentius at the Scatina had sent our people away to test them. He said that if they wanted to be truly accepted, they had to defeat a demon. Senia went to stop them. But it was too late. He only found burnt rags. And then they sent him to do the same. He never came back. Katja, I'm sorry. I, I didn't know. <laughs>